Hello everybody, I'm again here, my name is Vladimir and today I decided to go with a good and bad trade. I think that will be very useful for you because kind of most of the time it's difficult to recognize which pieces to trade and which to keep and why to do it and why not to do it. So I like to start with one relatively simple position material is very uh, reduced how you can see so here black just played that's move yeah improving the rook and attacking the pound so kind of white has a lot of choice white can eventually try to trade the active rook they can go passive or maybe they can just suck a pound to get active defense for example yeah, something like that to improve the rook even. so now I'm gonna give you a chance to decide what you like to do for a while. Take your time, little bit, and let me know once you are ready what you play for white. You can also tell me when you are ready, kind of <laughs> raise your hand. So guys, white to move, white has a choice. Still nobody answer. I like to get at least one, two answers. Uh, wait, Mister, you mean Rook A1? Yes, okay, because Rook A8 is there, so no way. Yeah, they can push the pawn. Yeah, it's similar like to play Rook B1. Yes, kind of protecting the pawn. I just give you some. Uh, random moves ideas yes b4 of course possible so you like b4 good to see you again mister eat soup so you're not missing any lesson huh? very good <laughs> you can improve like that uh, okay guys now let's discuss some of you like rook a1 some of you like b4 what about people in the chess club what you like Daniel? Yeah, I Daniel. Guess, I, I guess I would play rook b1. I'm pretty sure your answer is to be active. Cause what you play? play uh, rook b1. Here? Yeah. Why are you pretty sure I answer? I didn't answer anything. So you like rook b1, okay. And maybe you, sir? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, rook to a1. I want to I wanna be able to penetrate with to trade the rooks okay guys so here in the game was played rook a1 the move looks very logical why because if takes takes looks okay for white yes and if uh, black takes kind of white traded the black active rooks correct yeah i mean this should be lost for black yeah but the trick is that like that this endgame should be losing for white who can guess why this endgame should be losing for white doesn't matter that eventually white made a good trade they traded your left your the opponent's bishop. active piece what you lost so basically that's it's a bad trade maybe even decisive mistake in the game but eventually why the endgame should be losing eventually Okay, maybe engine could hold one or another way, but objectively is losing. We will discuss why. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because because black is going to be able to penetrate with the king on the on the king side. Okay, okay, guys. Now let's discuss one. We have this. We has kind of some fixed pounds here already, and you can see that black bishop is active white bishop is passive so the main difference is between the bishops we will get the same color bishop end game but black has superior bishop and how to know such end game guys it's winning or no or losing or no white are in passive defense they can't really attack anything of black you're going to see soon and that's why white should be losing one or another way 
Yes, correct, sir. G, G3 and D4 are weak, yes. Okay, I still like to come back here to discuss something because the trees, this move really looks very logical because eventually trading the black active rook. But guys, the rook is the only piece could get active. So don't forget in the end games, we are talking about the active defense hold and passive defense lose. That's why white should keep the rook. And I usually suggesting active defense something in this way, one or another way, how you can see you can eventually get very active for example or maybe you can immediately win the pawn back eventually or make a repetition i don't need to show you some deeply lines but you can see white rook is getting active black rook is getting passive and usually active defense hold remember that and here white should be able to hold maybe without a big trouble yeah big problems so Let's come back to the game. White played through K1. And now I believe black are winning, but what black need to do first, like a first step of their plan in this position? Who can tell me? Uh, Mr. Itai, let's move leading to a draw. Yes, guys, this is the winning idea. We have to fix the pawn. Otherwise, we'll be drawish maybe. And now we have two weaknesses. You can see, guys, that let's say I can just give you a move. That white bishop, yeah. I just giving you some idea. Uh, that was the game, sorry. But let's say white can improve the bishop, for example. Bishop could be front of the pounds, but again, white bishop guys can be only a defender, okay? Never can attack anything, remember that. So, it's not big deal, it's pound, bishop behind the pounds or front of the pounds, because I know for you it's very easy to recognize bishop here is bad, because it's behind the pounds, but how you see it's no difference? Sir, it's not that draw, it's winning for black, okay? <laughs> That's why basically trading the rooks was a basically decisive mistake. Again, maybe engine guys could hold somehow because engines are very good in the active defense. Only way guys here why to get active defense is somehow to lose a pawn, maybe d4 pawn or g3 pawn, and somehow to get active their pieces. Because if you try to cover the pawns all the time, that is a passive defense. But again, from practical point that has to be losing end game because passive defense always lose. And remember that that's how a good player evaluate the end game. We don't calculating moves. I go there, he goes there. We just try to figure out it's active defense or passive defense. And like that, we know the, the truth about the position. So let's go next. How you see black improve the bishop and they has to penetrate with the king. How they can penetrate with the king? Who can tell me? Let's see, can you win this endgame? It's kind of winning one. Bishop to uh, move Guys, I don't really need a move. If you can make me like a plan, I like that, that, that. Because white are just waiting. They will either move the bishop, either just king. Left and right, left and right. Yeah, so you're going to bring the... Okay, Mr. Al Kadim, correct? Yes, sir, I'm listening. The, you're going to bring the um, uh, bishop behind the pawns and, um, uh, and the king, and. And then? Um, what the change? I just moved the king left and right. Yeah, so, so if you play bishop to, uh, what is that, c1 there? Yeah, okay, c1. king d3. Yeah, but then you can't move back. Yes, I will just move the bishop then. Bishop f2, bishop e1. You can't make me the... Okay. Okay, guys, we have to penetrate with the king, and that is the difficult part. King cannot penetrate from the king side. We have to trade this pawn. Once we trade this pawn, guys, we're going to have too many squares to penetrate. You can see all these three squares. 
So that's why kink is going on the other side. Now we're trying to trade the pounds because pound is a defender. This is now a very good trade. This pound was a good defender covering two squares for black king to penetrate. So here, no really way for um, white to prevent black to penetrate. I told you somehow here engines going some active defense. I remember somehow he sucked one of the pounds. I don't remember which one and keeping the draw somehow maybe. But that's guys, I'm pretty sure nobody can really do it uh, to lose the pounds just for nothing and kind of keeping some somehow active defense. Uh, the game continuing this way. There is no way to keep the opposition, you can see, due to how black win. Some good trade for black here. I mean good because for concrete reason. Everybody should find the winning move is which one? Which is the winning move? Uh, yes, we trade the bishops and we win the pawn. Yeah. That's why we kind of going for a bad trade but winning a pawn and easy the game. Okay, how you see this was the first part. Kind of the one of the part of the kings penetrating. But still, it's not so easy to make progress. Uh, the way to make progress is to somehow make black king uh, white position tsuk swank, and then either they move the bishop and lose the pawn, either they have to lose the. So how you will try to make the tsuk swank right now? Uh, you can try, yes. Bishop b4 immediately. I should try bishop e3 maybe, guys. No, king e3 maybe. Huh? Yeah, king e3. I try king e3. Sir? King c2. What do you mean king c2? White king cover there. King e3. Uh, okay, then king to e2. No, king f4, sorry. I can go king f4 now. Guys, bishop b4, king e3. Yeah, king. Uh, bishop e1, I can take now, and king f4. And I'm yeah, not so sure I'm who is going gonna, to win. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play. After you play king 2. If king c2, I go king f4 again. No, because I answered the people also on the chat. That's why. So, guys, you should figure out exactly how to make a uh, tsuk Okay, yeah, this move is good, bravo. Uh, I go king e3 again. Bishop c7, king e3. Yeah, bishop d2, king d3 back, and then how you make me tsukwa? There is a need to maneuver, why not? Guys, bishop c7, king e3. Then king c2, king e2. So how you exactly make me tsuk swank? Yeah, king e2 opposition. Yes, mister, yes. Yes. Okay, guys, yeah, you kind of need little bit triangulation. Yes, mister, al -Kadim, correct. You can go in different way too. At least that was the Tsuk Swank in the game. Uh, you can go, some, some of you gave me from the other squares. You can try to, it's exactly the same. Okay, no difference. Uh, just in the game he tried from this way. And now he hits a Tsuk Swank. In the game he played bishop to e3. No, he doesn't play bishop e3 in the game. No, bishop e3 he played. Bishop e1, bishop f2, and then black kings penetrating and winning a pawn, and black won the game. Okay, guys, so how you see passive defense usually lose? Uh, 
I remember I analyzed it a lot. Somehow engine was giving this pawn earlier to G3 and trying to not let Black King to penetrate. Somehow was making draw, but I really don't remember how. Just I remember he was giving this pawn early and somehow was trying to fight against Black King somehow and making some miracle draws. But of course, human can't really calculate so deeply and all this geometry how to which move which to answer so basically due to that trading the rooks guys here was a decisive mistake because sorry that was the only piece which can keep active defense remember active defense hold passive defense lose and after we fix the weaknesses now another good trade remember you have to trade the pounds otherwise black king cannot penetrate that it's a good trade for black and like that they will have three squares to penetrate and white can keep all and later how you see we need it at Tsuk so guys often we make such a mistake um, because we only think about oh his rook looks active let's trade but we don't see what happened after that kind of consequences and that was the only piece which can get active that's mean attacking anything and that's why it was best chance for white to keep the rook remember guys passive defense looks hello guys hello thank you for coming <coughs> so here guys i like to go one game of karpov and they played 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 and one moment guys wait what is my diagram hmm. wait what's wrong guys Let's start from earlier because okay here here Karpov has white sorry he has white Karpov yeah so f6 okay here it's white to move kind of how you see some more or less normal position they played slav and my question is what plan are you going to make for white and why Hello Patrick, good to see you again. Uh, how? How you can do it? Okay guys, knight f5, I should move my queen away. Queen f8, let's say. Uh, queen c5 could be a move too, but let's say queen f8. And then. Guys, the topic for today is good or bad trade. So kind of look for this what you like to trade what you don't like to trade like idea uh Al-Kadin, he did something like that but why you are playing the first move you like to trade the black square bishop but this will be good only if you're able to fix the pounds. If black will be able to play c5, then you don't achieve so much, Mr. Itai. Yes, Patrick, I think you are right. Guys, something about the trades, yes? Okay, look at fate, Mr. Itai. What you really achieve with this move? If G6, you achieve something, compromising king. Or maybe even rook D1, rook D1, rook D8 could happen. And then 
It's why to move, Mr. Hamster. <laughs> Radioactive, okay. Okay, guys, I give you a little bit more time. What about Danny and you, sir? Any idea? Okay, Patrick, some idea? What you think? You got some ideas or not yet? Okay, okay, guys, here Karpov took his knight, but let's try to see why. Yes, some of you found, bravo. Uh, but then... What next? Why he took this knight? What was the reason? There was very concrete reason, and that's why he decided to give that good bishop eventually. Okay, knight also was not so bad. But kind of knight was a defender of some squares, guys. Knight was a defender of these two squares. And for that reason, Karpov decided to remove the defender. And what next? Bishop to d3. OK, guys, now bishop d3 or f3? You have a choice. Let's try to see. Okay, guys, yes. He, Karpov played bishop d3. Of course, bishop f3, I could agree, also looks good. Uh, but he decided bishop d3, there is biggest reason. Because g6 doesn't work with just taking, and next, later, knight f5 is coming. Uh, so you have to play g6, and now you can see the king looks really compromised on the light square, and black pieces are also, guys, far away from the black king so kind of king it's too weak now and how you know when king looks weak without real defender this is also a sign you can maybe build one attack yes <laughs> he kind of likes to build some attack now okay he bring the bishop to g6 some of you wanted even bishop h5 earlier uh knight f5 makes sense yes Playing on the, he weakness the light square and now he played the light square. Maybe supporting f4, maybe something else, we will see. Maybe, for example, maybe knight h4 and some checks from here and knight g6. Maybe, eh? we don't know. But kind of knight looks pretty good. So black played c5 trying to improve their pieces. So white made another good trade, they taking now because they are sure the rook will be open. So how you see, white traded on time, yeah, kind of, not earlier, because if white was trading earlier, guys, black will definitely take with this pawn, discovering the bishop and keeping the rook blocked yet. So another on time trade by Karpov. And what you gonna play next, guys? Yes, Mr. Ita, yes. Yes, he compromising the king and soon he crushed the king. <laughs> soon. Which move? Rook A7. Yes. Okay, guys, Rook A7. Improve the pieces all the time, guys. Okay? You see, it doesn't matter what position, always think, can I improve the pieces? And, of course, he is not afraid of Rook takes D1 in general because Queen can be lift again around the king. 
Yeah, for giving chances, uh, maybe somewhere, king could get more weak, maybe. So queen c7, and now Karpo follow his idea. Yes, I have Petrosen game. It's coming next one. Why? <laughs> you love Petrosen? So knight h4. We discussed that that could be one of the ideas of knight on f5 with bishop h7 coming and knight g6 crushing, yes? You love Petrosan? Are you Armenian? <laughs> so mm, he took took and trying to trade the active rook on a7. Why Shiro doesn't play queen b8? I don't know. How you know? So here, queen g4, sucking the rook, guys. Why we suck the rook? How I win after rook takes? It's not difficult, everybody should find. Yeah, queen e6, queen e8, attacking on the light square. Again, I like to mention, guys, that Karpov made a trade to compromise light square around the king, and then he's conducting the game on the light square. If you remember during the lesson last Sunday, when we had tactics, one of the tactics was we psych exchange to compromise king on the dark square, and then we attack on the dark squares. <laughs> So guys, how you see, it's good also to figure out this way to attack, let's say, G7 or to attack on the light square. So uh, he's going for counterattack, eventually and defense, and the kind of final shot in the game, how wide win now. Knight f5, okay, and let's say after knight f5, I go queen g2 check. Going for a good trade because black king is to compromise. Queen g2, guys, it's a good trade for black trading queens. Always look for good trades. Oh, I miss, I miss rook g7. I lost the piece here. So I cannot trade like that, sorry. Then I will just, okay, let's see if I just take, guys. Yes, 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 rook g7. Will I get mated? Ah, I just lose a queen, huh? Oh, and then why Karpov doesn't play knight f5? Guys, why Karpov doesn't play knight f5? Who can tell me? Okay, it looks like knight f5 wins, huh? I think maybe this move. Covering. But you can still gain some material with the idea to win the queen later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, looks like knight f5 win, but he won much easier. At least I think and st uh, better. I think that was maybe the reason that he could win the pawn on h6, but not really the game. And here he gave up because he will be checkmate soon. It's a calculation. I mean, he can save everything eventually, but he cannot save the king. King is crushed on the dark square. He's making some few moves. Yeah, there is a unstoppable mate on the uh, light square. And guys, how you know, nothing better than checkmate the king. Yeah, that's easy when it's uh, made on the light squares. Okay, so how you see bishop e5, a good trade, because knight was a defender, and then he compromised the king, and later he attacked on the light square. Uh, how you see Karpov never was taking first, and he took on b5 only when he was sure he can improve his rook. Some of you asked me why not here, I think because queen needed to cover this square, I believe. I'm not so sure, just think that somewhere will come all this idea with knight g6 one or another way. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, 
Let's go to the next one. Some of you asked me about the Petrosan. Uh, wait, where is my Petrosan game? Here. That should be the Petrosan game. Yes? Okay, the Petrosan, the famous. Here. How you see why they're preparing, starting pushing here? Or first here and next here? The pounds looks pretty dangerous. So what you're going to play for black and white? Yes. <laughs> Carpo was famous with improving the pieces before the final action and next one he started action pieces are kind of on the best spots all the time. Patrick, you're not trading because you don't know. That's why I'm teaching you now. Maybe for some concrete reason you can trade that bishop on b2, yeah? Yes, sir, that's what he played. I believe many of you could be familiar with that example. It's a very famous game and I was really impressed when I saw this example long, long ago. But still it's a very, very spectacular way for a good trade. Who's his opponent here? Uh, that's famous game Reshevsky versus Petrosa. Yes, versus Petrosan and Black found fantastic way to go for a good trade. Is this the rookie six game? Yep. <laughs> you know, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's wait for other. Just two of you found so far. Uh, it's kind of very spectacular and the way to understand how a top player is making decision. Let's give a little bit time for others. Hola Gabriel, como estas? <laughs> Thank you for coming, Gabriel. Guys, black to move, find a fantastic idea for black. Kind of white pounds looks too dangerous. White are almost ready to promote a queen in the middle game. Yeah. They just prepared e6 with the last move. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Itai. Are you from Italy? <laughs> Your nickname is almost like Italy. Very close. Guys, I give you 30 more seconds. Uh, Mr. Rita, you know this example from before or just figure out? Oh, okay. And not sleeping right now. Okay, good. Okay, guys, here Petrosan found fantastic idea because white pounds are too dangerous. You can see he can prepare pushing them, something like that, and pounds are kind of crashing. Uh, even if you take, still looks pretty bad, yeah. And again, pounds are coming. And that's why only way to prevent the pounds are this, and he likes also to switch knight on d5. Knight is the best blocking piece. Oh, you are very strong, Mr. Rita. Okay. What Mr. Radioactive? Maybe because you are not good with the trades, that's why you are so underrated. So the idea is clearly to see we like eventually to not allow white to push. If they prepare to push d5, knight will jump on d5 and we block the white center. And of course, he didn't take it. You can see if he takes, we takes. Yes, correct. And again, I will be transferred very quickly to d5. And then white rooks will be very useless. No really open file. Knight will be fantastic on d5. And white will be hopeless on the light square. Black have full control over the light square. So a4. And what you're going to play now for black? 
<laughs> okay, Patrick. Okay, sir. Have a good one. Thank you for coming. Guys, what you played off for black? Just follow the ideas, correct? Knight e7, now he decided to take and knight to d5. Uh, here, black has a choice. Some of you asked me, black are with Petrosan, yeah? Yes, sir, knight is going on fantastic spot. How see black was able to improve pieces, made a very good trade. Because, guys, if we come back in the beginning position with all these pounds from the dark squares, white square bishop is the most important piece right now most powerful and that's why we are okay to trade it that's why rookie six we are okay to and black rooks are very passive yeah they can't really imagine to become active so that's it's a very good trade we took the white most important piece for their strategy okay guys what you gonna play here for white let's just try to see white has a choice to kill that bishop or to do something else so you're going to kill or no <laughs> white's not fair he doesn't think maybe because he was too good okay he definitely has a huge talent but he definitely also worked a lot Yes, of course. Of course, guys, you have to take it. He took. Again, rooks are very useless. They can't really penetrate even. Mm, the other rook cannot come eventually to f1 to support. You can see. Bishop is too powerful on d3. Of course, better to kill that bishop. Uh, it's a good trade. Again, doesn't matter kind of you lose material, but quality of pieces is changeable, guys. Remember that. And soon they went for some draw. You're gonna see they could play differently. Mm. And kind of here, I will just follow the game, improving the king in case no back rank. And their grid draw, the most obvious line could be something like that, where eventually on, only black could play for a win with such a powerful knight. Yeah, black white bishop is too bad now. Okay, he didn't try, just to have one idea. Okay, guys, now I like to show one another example of, of Karpov. I will go boom, 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 and kind of they go here. Uh, some bad trade. That it's a bad trade because then white has more free hands to improve the king in the end game. So now Karpov is improving here, yeah, remember such a moves, yeah, fixing the pounds on the color of the bishop. A good trade. No, this is different game. Now it's Karpov again with white. So Karpov going for a good trade, improving the rook uh, and pushing the pounds. <coughs> kind of fixing the pounds on the color of the bishop, yeah. And here, Karpov started to play like a real Karpov. Learn this way of playing, guys. Oh, high-level players, oh, world champions playing like that, doing nothing. That's very difficult, but that's how they win such a type of positions. Rook A1, Rook B1, not big deal. You're going to see soon. Go back, go back, not big deal. <coughs> You see, he goes back. But guys, that is a high level. When you have superior position, when opponent is in passive defense, we are not in a hurry. And that's why we play like that. In general, we play like that because like that opponent's thinking, oh, it's easy draw and he can easy make a mistake after that. Yes, kind of like that, Patrick, yes. So here it's coming kind of something from Karpov. So this is the first moment. Now white has a choice. You gonna trade or no? The first time we has now options to trade or no? What do you think? If you trade, why? If you don't trade, why? No. 
Why you don't like to trade it? Well, because the night is weak and the bishop is strong. Okay, then, Danny? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay, guys, all of you doesn't like to trade. Fair enough, he didn't trade it. Uh, and how you see, he didn't really try early to play c5, maybe king c4, d5, creating pass pawn, one, one, one. What is the normal way? He just doing nothing, kind of. So now he played such a moves. Uh, again, continue doing nothing. And here, black played this move. Now giving no choice for white. Either they has to take, either they has to move bishop away. Again, white has a choice. You gonna trade bishop for knight or no? Yeah, but if I yeah, how how some of you mentioned king to d8 is going, yeah. So now you should play move with the bishop. Okay, Patrick. Guys, white are better either way. It yeah? doesn't matter they kind of trade or not trade. You should just decide why you like to trade or why you don't like to trade. Did they change something from before or no? Yeah, the pawns on, the, on uh, A5. Sorry? The pawn is on A5. That was on A5 long ago. <laughs> Maybe like 10, 10 moves ago was on A5 the pawn. His last move was Rook A1. Right, so he's already got that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm looking at A6 right now and trying to see if there's some way to... Um, okay, Mr. Artyom, uh, fair enough. Yes? Yeah, to see if there's... Uh, Somebody to create an entry for the rook or push the pawn down his throat. Okay. Danny, what about you? Uh, I'm keeping the bishop. You're keeping the bishop. I see most of you like to play bishop e4 and then later either a6, either c5, d5, kings improving. Okay. Nobody likes to take bishop for a knight? Hmm? Can you take a second look? <coughs> I agree that after bishop before white are better. They definitely better last 15 moves, yeah. But okay, Mr. Google, Mr. Ita, yes, 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 that's the difference. Bravo. Okay, guys, here Karpov took. And basically G6 guys become like a blonde. Wow, how they changed so much because g6 it's really a blunder and now game is over after bishop take d7 so how you see in this position Karpov didn't want to take because he think that it's a bad trade and white are still better but it's objectively draw one and it's better to keep the the bishop but now opponents make mistake and he took and what is the difference guys what so change it? What is the difference? Why now it's a bishop d7 winning move? Uh, Patrick, yes, something like that. Okay, guys, the whole difference is now d square become weak and white getting a winning rook and game. And Karpov immediately occupied the weak square. The game was like that. Black are trying active defense. If they go passive defense, still he's winning because kind of it's coming a6 with rook c6, two connected pass pounds. If he tries to trade the rook end game, it's losing because of the game, the pawn on g5 fixed the pounds, yeah? <coughs> And eventually, that is the best defense. 
but now it's coming this move and d5 and breakthrough is going here on the queen side later so mm, that's why he didn't play like that and he played because if he doesn't try rook d6 will come easy a6 sooner or later yeah and two connected pass pounds so that's why he tried king king to b8 rook f6 king a7 h5 king a6 so what you're going to play now for white yes rook on f6 is too strong and keeping black rook too passive because of the backward pawn on f7 so how you see that was the main difference you see bishop was superior than the knight and before that was not good to take the knight but because of g6 weakness that square g6 become a blunder that what Carpo was waiting doing nothing because then game was not winning was just clearly better let's say plus one but once g6 bishop takes knight it's plus five just to have one idea uh, and that's why it's very important to know when and why to trade pieces guys you are very good bravo you are very good very good g5 guys the killing move if you are greedy that's more going to be droish one yes if you try to win a pawn this looks more droish than winning because now white rook is getting too awkward here yes and also black can create a pass pawn with b5 so that's why karpov is going breakthrough to create a dangerous pass pounds guys how are you going to win now white are completely winning game continue a single move yeah g5 was the killing move here yeah. yes many of you found g5 bravo <coughs> hmm, guys what you going to play now last move into the game some high level move but very easy move yes mr itai you are very strong bravo yes guys you should first gain a temp in case you don't really need but in case kicking the king he give up but of course easy to see rook here rook and then you can easy kind of bringing the king king it's stuck and then you just going easy to support the pass pound okay guys so i uh, hope you like it yeah it's really impressive uh, to see how he was doing nothing for a while of course he know how to make progress in the beginning position of the end game oh sorry guys uh, of course he knew that sooner or later he should push somewhere d5 yeah, creating a pass pounds but how you see for a while he was doing nothing and that is guys this high level way of technique because here if you just force it's anyway not winning i told you according to engine around plus one mm, and he was kind of doing nothing for a while here he could take but it's drawish and that's why maybe black didn't figure out that if they play g6 they kind of don't uh wanted to give white a choice they didn't figure out that now if takes it's a huge difference this square is weak and now game it's over so g6 become a blunder and that basically what karpov was waiting uh, he just needed to play again night bait like he did early yeah? how you see he played night bait early and just waiting so he just needed again to go night bait night a6 and to wait for maybe where white will try somehow to maybe somewhere push either d5 either somehow creating a pass pound one or another way either maybe first open some files with g5 and then eventually open file to penetrate so how you see 
it's very important to know when we like to trade pieces uh, no and white you can see again like in the previous carpov game knight was a defender of something and that's why carpov killed the knight to exploit the weakness square and now game is over okay guys okay so let's go another one <laughs> Yes, guys, everybody is nervous when play against Karpov, huh? that time. Mm. Okay, guys, now one very famous. That is at least one of the first games I know. Here, guys, white played bishop h6. And here my question is what you're going to play for black, because that's very useful trade. Kind of trading the last defender around the king. So what you're going to play for black and white? Thank you, sir, for staying so late. I believe it's very late in your place now. Mr. Normal, do you know this example? <coughs> okay, now it's easy to play moves like that, guys, no days, but that time, because that game was played maybe eight years, maybe even more ago. Uh, you know this, this, or you know that the idea? Because that's very thematic idea right now. No days, people know, but that days, at least this is one of the first example I know where they played like that. Uh, okay guys, here black played this move. What is a really good move and we just play like that without really calculating so much. Uh, the idea is that basically this bishop, it's not only a defender of the king guys, but this bishop is a black hole for counterattack. When you fianche to the bishop, you should know that that bishop is very important for your strategy. So guys, don't try to count so much. And especially if you play such a move, you can't count so much or you're, or you're brave to lose material or you're not. But nowadays, yes, we're calling this typical exchange sacrifice because bishop is two in one. Bishop is a defender of the king, an attacking piece at the same time, and rook is much useless than the rook. Value of the pieces is changeable, and concretely, bishop is much more valuable than the rook. And here, <coughs> uh, white took, and they should follow their idea still, they should try to attack, but they make now almost decisive mistake. They were afraid that maybe somewhere this queen somehow can jump to b4 maybe let's say takes knight jump for example and they played a3 defensive moves but that's it's a mistake because we have opposite side castle they have to attack but again nowadays this is typical exchange sacrifice you should just do it because you know we play like that due to the value of the pieces value of the pieces is changeable uh, and you can't really calculate because opponent can play again every single piece after he accept the exchange for example okay uh, and now black play is improving and white again going the passive so black are now attacking and kind of white didn't wanted black to have moving pounds you can see c4 d4 is coming Okay, now how you'll attack for black? You can see black king looks pretty safe with that bishop around the king here. And black doesn't really need uh, two rooks in the position. Yes, correct, Patrick. So again, guys, we consider this like a good trade because you're avoiding the trade of the bishops which will be definitely in the white favor in the beginning to trade bishop for bishop to compromising the king and to take black most important position most important piece in that type of position yeah that's why it's good to save the bishop that was a very good trade for black very good decision okay guys how you crash now he played bishop d7 other moves also possible, but that's really the best one. 
because he can't really defend now. Okay, let's just see how you'll finish the attack. Now game is really over. Takes, takes. A good trade removing a defender and now how you'll continue guys? Patrick, you're looking for fireworks, huh? <laughs> okay. For beauty, I mean. By fireworks, I mean beauty. Okay. Uh, yes, guys, many moves wins. Let's follow. He played queen h6, yes, check. You can start with any other move. He played f4. He took now here. I believe everything's win, but kind of discovered check. He played rook d2 and now hola senor let's see the final move in the game good to see you again mr chess power just you came we're going to finish soon Yes, guys, he played bishop c3 and too many threats are coming. Some discover attacks and white loss. Okay, again, I like to repeat to beginning positions. Bravo. That if you let this bishop to be traded one or another way, doesn't matter how, that it's a very good trade for white. But this is a very good decision, very good trade. Sakic exchange because this bishop is very important for black strategy and also protecting the king it's a defender of the king is that clear guys okay guys i see we're sh very short of time but kind of i still like to show very briefly something uh, kind of we got opposite side castle and here Black played this move, very strong move, and now, guys, what are you going to play for black here? Can you follow the ideas? White are happy to trade bishop for bishop. Of course, they are happy, yes. <laughs> to compromise black king. Knight c4, bishop takes g7. That's it's a very good trade for white. Yes, Patrick, that's what he played. <laughs> Bravo, Patrick. And Mr. Itai with black pieces is Mr. Gelfan. Maybe you know this game. Fantastic idea by uh, Gelfan. Guys, try to connect why he played rook c6. He played with the idea to double. And if he takes, guys, takes, we save the bishop and rook c3 is coming anyway. Okay. Compromising the king and crushing. And say, keep the king saved. So he moved here. And now he eventually went for this. Uh, it's a different because now no way, no defense against rook c3. And like that, uh, black king is safer according white. You see he traded very late when he was sure that white king is uh, compromised. Uh, very good trade now. And game is over. He won nicely. Okay, guys, how you see when we have fianchetto bishop? usually try to avoid the trade except if like here he concretely traded very late because he was sure that now no way to avoid rook c3 you can see the knight cannot really move because it's coming crashing there and rook c3 doesn't really support all this strategy because will be sacrifices again all the time and no time and black are much faster anyway Okay, guys, that's it was for today. <coughs> I hope you like the topic I choose and the examples I give you. So that is one of the most uh, important strategic idea in chess game about good and bad trade. And how you see, it's always very complicated. 
why we like to trade one piece why to keep one piece okay guys thank you very much and see you next time bye <music>